IT commanders, ladies, gentlemen, welcome back to another Elite Dangerous tutorial slash guide slash how do thingy. Today we're going to be looking at outfitting, so we're not going to be doing much flying, if any flying actually. It's going to be quite short, I hope. It's quite simple to explain. So we are going to go straight into it. Starport services. Actually, there's a quick way of doing this. Before you do this, let us go. Let us enter the hangar first. That way you have access to your menu. You can read the traffic report. I don't know. Uh, 1,861 ships. Yada, yada, yada. Galnet moves. You can look at the repairs, munitions. You can check the bulletin board. Naval progression. Yeah, we'll ignore that for the time being. You can go into your contacts tab where you pay a few of your bounties. You pay your fines, etc, etc. While we're still waiting for this shit to sort itself out. Shipyard, you can take a look at what's purchasing. Yeah, I can't afford that. All that. All that. Or any of this shit. But anyway, that's not the purpose of today's tutorial. Today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at outfitting menu. Which is... A little bit hard to understand for new players at first. But, uh... With a little bit of help, hopefully we can come to some... You know, come to some sort of understanding. That's a pretty ship. Pretty ship. Right, so we'll start with weapons. Weapons are quite simple. In the side one, you have two hard points, which is weapons, and two utility mounts under the ship, it seems, yes. Right. Now, if you notice, when you look at it, there is an F, a 1, and a 1. Now, the 1 under well, the top one, the F, F is basically the class of the weapon, i.e. quality. It ranges from I to A, I believe. Obviously, with A being the best, I being the worst. Is it I or is it G? I think it's either I think it's either I or G. I'm not sure, but I know F is pretty shit. You're not going to find small hard points. You're not going to find a, a a one rated A weapon. They don't exist. They scale up with the size, which brings us to the second one, which is underneath the white one. That one denotes the size of the hard point itself. So being a small hard point is one, medium hard point is two, large hard point. No, this thing is a huge. I think it's called a huge hard point or a super or a large. I don't even know what it's called. Like an ultra hard point, the largest one you can get, which you only find at Anaconda. So that's irrelevant. But we're gonna look at it today. We're gonna buy and there we go. There's another one. Another one. It tells you right there. Class one weapon. Rating F. Class one hard point. Its mass is two tons. Now the mass is quite important if you want to have a ship with quite a high jump range. <laughs> you ideally want the mass to be quite low. But if you want weapons. You may have to upgrade the frame shift drive. I know when you're trading, exploring, etc. Weapons, you may not want weapons to maximize your cargo abilities, so you remove the weapons. That's two tons off for a small hard point, which gives you a little bit more in the light, light years. A little bit more on the FSD. My English is terrible. My words are bad. So we're going to look at some weapons. We're going to look at some weapons. Mining, pulse laser F1. We got the burst laser F1. Pulse laser G1, the little symbol next to the pulse laser means jimbled. It does tell you in the uh, in the description of it. So single pulse laser with jimbled mount, signature attack and assist. Fairly straightforward. Looking at the uh, all the other bits and pieces. Class one rating G, obviously. So F G G is worse. That's because that's because gimbals are a little bit weaker than fixed. But they make up for that with the gym balling itself. Power draw 0 0.390, which comes off of your uh, available mega wattage. Gym ball power, gym ball mode. It's a thermic weapon, which means it's not. It's it's replenished by the weapons subsystem, i.e. the uh, little pip section in the. Uh, I'll show you. Laser weapons are uh, taken off of your overall power draw, so in the module sections, the yeah, in your output and usage. So my lasers are currently using 6% of my power. Turn it off, and it drops by 6%. Simple. So the more power you use, the bigger power generator you're going to need. This generator in here is pretty shit. E2, yes, it's pretty shit. So back into the menu. <laughs> Get back into the menu. We were looking at that, wasn't we? There we go. Armor penetration A. Thermic weapons, lasers are better at pounding through armor or rather shields than uh better at penetrating shields than the uh projectile weapons like railguns and stuff 
and multi cannons. Rate of fire, four squirts per second, if you will. Damage per second is a little bit lower than because it's because it's skinboard again. Thermal load, low. Okay, so you've got that. You've got the mining laser using for mining, if you can be a miner. We probably won't do a, uh, a mining tutorial because I'm not a big fan of mining. Torpedo pylons, cheap. But the torpedoes are exceptionally expensive. Like 15,000 credits per torpedo. Multi-cannon is our uh, projectile weapon. This one's fixed. A-class armor penetration is good at hole For chewing up holes, multi-cannons can't be beat. They're amazing, in my opinion. Massive amount of ammo. Massive rate of fire. And just good fun. we right, got cannons, mine launchers. But yeah, back onto... There's an I-class I right there. I knew it. But yeah, we're scaling with the classes. B, missile rack. Good quality weapon. Small, A small good quality weapon, a missile rack. Very, very good at smashing holes. Beam lasers are, in my opinion, the king of dropping shields. But they do draw quite a lot of power, as you can see, though they are 0 0.690 compared to the 0 0.390 of the pulse. <laughs> Going down, railgun, maybe even more power. I think it is even more fucking power. But that's the subsystem king. But yeah, B class missile rack, better. Oh, they're scaling up in price. F class turret. This one's a turret, as you can see by the uh, funny little tank looky like thingy next to the words and in the description itself large kind of projectile weapon on turret mount we'll get to turrets later on okay so that's weapons in a class 1 hard point you can fit nothing higher than a class 1 weapon so if the weapon says class 2 and you're trying to put it on a class 1 hard point it will not fit sweet okay let's go internal a bit more complicated because there's a lot more numbers but we can get through this All right lightweight alloys that's just your armor. That's the hole. You reinforce it, you gain weight, obviously. You go for the uh, reinforced alloy, not bad. Military grade, a bit better. Mirrored surface, good for lasers. Not so good for uh, projectiles. Reactive is the opposite. So it's good for... Uh, good for kinetic, bad for lasers. Power plant, this is the important one. Right, as you can see, now the numbers start to change. If you look down in the other, other section, the numbers start to change. And the scale up quite. So you've got a D class rating, a C class rating, a B class, and an A class rating. So obviously, A being the best. A, D. Yeah, look at that. There we go. A and, a and D are the lightest. E is really heavy. Jesus. One ton. Not bad. Ups the light years by 0.31. Not bad. C class. Adds another half ton. Not bad. B. Two tons. So B and C. B, C and E are the heaviest. D is the lightest. And A is the best. Pretty much. But I do I do run quite a few Ds on my Viper. And I run a lot of A's as well. That was quite an expensive shit to upgrade. But that's not really relevant today. Which I'll show you the Viper at some point. We'll go out. We'll go out and have some fun. Maybe kill some anacondas with that one time. But yeah, ideally you'd want to start with maybe a D-class power plant. It gets you the most late light years for your money. It's quite cheap as well in the Sidewinder. And you've got B-class, obviously A-class. Power plant thrusters. Again, they're changing the numbers. D, lightest. A, the best. There's no B-class in this station. C is the heaviest. But that also uh, ups your optimal, ups your maximum. Who the ups the best ups the the maximum mass that you can actually use a thrusters my fucking words are not coming out today so as you can see if you look at the uh the mass section on the second panel current mass is 46.9 tons i have a maximum of 72 tons if you up that you lower the weight on the d class you lower it by half a ton or by a whole ton and the maximum amount of hull this thing can push goes up to 81 tons you go to C, up to 90 tons at the cost of weight. A, up to 108 tons. So you can pr pretty much maximize this bastard for, you know, maneuverability using the thrusters, but they do cost a bit. One thing I forgot about the power plant, obviously it ups the available megawattage. What a div. What a div. 
So with D class 7.2 7 megawatts, C class 8 megawatts, B class 8.8 .8 megawatts at the cost of weight, and A is 9.6. So we're currently running at deployed, all my hard points out and everything, 5.28 megawatts. A 9.6 megawatts should be really enough. In fact, I actually think that for a Sidewinder, probably the 8, 8 megawatts would do the trick. Even 7.2 if you're careful. Frameshift drive is the most important one. Currently, if I, I'm already at a C, I upgraded it already. So we've got 10.21 light years. Also drops the uh, amount of power usage because it was obviously more uh, efficient. E class drops you down. D class, yeah, I put the most, I put one of the most heaviest ones to my ship for some reason. But I still need to get out for the last tutorial. So D class would up it by. In fact, let's just change. Let's just buy that back, so I can show you. All right. So you got an E class at six point nine light years. D uh, it, e rating, E rating, D rating ups you by like one and a half. B ups you by a significant amount, but at the cost of four tons worth of weight. And A class ups you by nearly ten. So look, sixteen light years unladen. That's that's pretty much explorer class right there. <laughs> that's pretty damn fucking good. But still, I recommend. I had the E class that got me up to uh, ten light years. So we're gonna put that back on again. That's good enough. Life support, quite important if you're prone to getting shot in the face. And your canopy cracks. Each class gives you a, a separate uh, oxygen time. So, and it also reduces the weight, with the exception of B and C. So your D class is like, I don't know, you get seven and a half minutes, which you'll see in the thingy, except in the panel. Seven and a half minutes of oxygen time should your canopy crack. C gives you ten minutes, and A gives you fifteen minutes, but it's heavier. That's B even, sorry, B. B class is 15 minutes, but it gives you heavy. It makes you heavier. You're trying to keep your light. You're trying to keep your weight down. Power distribution, very important. Very important. I recommend going straight for the A class. As it looks, you can see weapons charge. Weapons capacity 10. Weapons recharge 1.2. Engines 8. Engines charge 0.4. Systems 8. Charge recharge 0.4. And the numbers go up and up and up. And A is the best for the quickest shield generation, the quickest boost capacities. You're going to want the A-class distributor as soon as you can afford it. Because it's the best one. In my opinion. doesn't up the... Uh, it's the same weight as the E-class, but it ups everything else significantly. D-class will up the light years again. But you're going to want to get the best one you can for this. This is very important. So always get the best one you possibly can for your class sensors. I like to run with D sensors because they weigh least and the uh, they weigh the least and the optimal range is negligible. It's only a kilometer. It's only a kilometer, and you lose you lose a bit of extra weight. So I recommend I recommend D class sensors. Fuel tank you always start with by default the largest one you can get. Shield Jenny, or are we Shield Jenny? There's lots of stuff here because we are in an internal compartment. Lots of stuff as you can see they're all classes and whatnot. So what class are we? We are class two. So class two, so you can fit class ones at the cost of efficiency. E two there, C one there. As you can see, the two, the C two class, C rating class two, D rating class one, class rating A. This is the best shield bank you can get for a class one ship or a class one hard point. This is a class two hard point, so obviously it's gonna be a bit more expensive. An E class frame shift drive. But normally I like to put in. Probably a D a D class shield jenny would be the best one to go with. To start with. Before you get to an A. You might not even need an A. It might not be a thing. But I do recommend a D one because D is the lightest rating of stuff. Like D1 intermediate discovery scanner. They're pretty good. It's expensive though. Cargo rack. Or this internal capacity. You're going to have a lot of stuff in here. You're going to have whatever, whatever tickles your pickle. If you're a pirate. You can have your hatch breaker limpets at a class two rating. You can have a refinery class two for a miner. You can have fuel scoop if you're an explorer class two, up to light years again. Shield cell bank if you're going to be uh, hunting, bounty hunting, or whatever you want to do. Class two right there. 
Actually, funny enough, for Shield Shield Banks, I recommend a B class or B rating. I've got to stop saying class. A B rating Shield Shield Bank because you get the most charges out of it. It's funny. You get like 11. It's refinery C2, you need that as well if you're going to be a uh, miner. And another or class 1 compartment. So let's have a look. So, say you're going to be a miner. Say, actually, no. Let's think. If you're going to be, let's say, let's do some theoretical things here. If you're going to be a bounty hunter, I'm a bounty hunter by trade. I'm sure you've seen some videos. You'd go for the best power plant. So class A2, that's 160,000 credits, quite a lot. Thrusters, I'd go A2 again. It's a class 2 hard point. Rating A. Frame shift drive, obviously A2. Class 2, class 2, class 2 mount. And a rating A. Life support, I'd probably go with a D. Power distribution, A. Sensors D. Fuel cell, I left that as it is. Shield Jenny, I've got an A class in my uh, Viper. In fact, I'm going to pull the Viper out after this and just show you what I've got in the Viper. Cargo rack E. I've got a cargo rack for just for some uh, basic stuff. And in this one, I've got a fuel scoop. Fuel scoop. Yeah, yeah let's, I'm just going to show you. Let's just go and let's go and have a look. Let's go and have a look. So, to better understand what I'm running in this Viper, this thing has been nicely, nicely kitted out for me. 12 megawatt. I'm, I'm running overpowered, but that's fine. I've got, as you can see, an F2 multi cannon, F2 multi cannon, E1 beam, E1 beam, all in the same classes. A chaff launcher and a cargo scanner for those pesky pirates, scums, and smugglers. Military grid bulkhead, because why the fuck not? Power plant A3. Three class, class three A rating on a class three bay. Shit, I'm not buying anything else. Go away. Frame shift drive A three three, A three three D two two, A three three D three three. Fuel tank maximum as you can get. Shield cell bank B three three. Shield journey A three three. Cargo rack A two two. Fuel scoop A one one. As long as you keep the numbers same. And you understand the weights and what exactly what you want. This thing is this thing. This thing takes on vibe. This thing takes on anacondas out with these. Hopefully, in a future video, I'll be showing you what I mean. I do plan on hunting some anacondas for you in the missions with this. But yeah, that's pretty much the outfitting. As long as the two numbers match, and you pick tank that you require for your needs, you'll be you'll be quids in basically. You can't really go wrong. You can chop and change. As as yet, there's no there's no uh, deduction of money for swapping out modules. So I could buy a D3. I could sell the D3, get a C3, and I get my money back. All of it, everything I paid for it would come back. So it's not really a big issue yet. If you want to chop and change, see what loadout suits you the best. By all means, go for it. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I can't really. I think I've explained about as much as my, my knowledge can be. I think I've explained to you about as much as I know with regards to this stuff. If there's anything else, I'll come to it in a future tutorial video. So uh, until then, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped you be able to spec out your ship in, I don't know. I'm going to refill this, actually. I hope this helped you spec out your ship a little bit. And... Uh, until the next tutorial, I think next one, I was going to show you uh, the basic bulletin board missions. But they're quite self-explanatory, really. They are quite self-explanatory. What's this? Yeah, look, you do, you, you bring, you, you find Bertrand, you bring it over, you've got six hours. Yeah, it's quite easy. These ones, you're given the cargo to take to X planet for X money. Good to start with, very good to start with. These ones, I wouldn't recommend to start with because they're illegal. You've also got... That's it. That's what I've got here. So it's fuck all. So uh, next time, I think we're going to try some low-level bounty hunting with the stocks, I wonder. So uh, until then, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon.